Okay guys, welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky for December 2020, which is shaping up to be the best month of the year for astronomical events. So stay tuned. But first, a couple of quick announcements. The first, my 2021 night sky calendar is now on the last batch. So once this is sold, I won't be doing another print run and that will be it. We're also taking a break from posting between the 19th and 27th of December. So if you order during that time, you might have to wait a little bit extra to get your calendar. But if you want the calendar before Christmas, it's best to order as soon as possible. And the second quick announcement is that I will be co-hosting an astrophotography workshop in Portugal in July 2021 with none other than Brendan Van Son. So to find out more details about that workshop, there will be a link in the video description down below. Now coming up this month, we have a total solar eclipse, the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, which you can see behind me at the moment. There's also the Geminid meteor shower, which is one of the best of the year and also falls on new moon. The winter circle is dominating the night sky now and it's full of good star tracker targets. But before we deep dive into all of that and more, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. There are thousands of inspiring classes covering a huge range of creative topics such as graphic design, photography, videography, freelancing and more. I'm sure many of you watching this video will appreciate Ian Norman's class on nightscapes, an incredible introduction to all things landscape astrophotography. Or how about James Manning's Astronomy for Starscapes which will help you make sense of the night sky and plan your astrophotographs with ease. I've been using Skillshare for just over a year now and I've used it for all sorts of stuff there are lots of good classes on freelancing and running a business and also Adobe Premiere classes that help me edit these videos premium members get access to all of those courses and you can try as many as you like and if you want to join along just follow the link in the video description and you get two months completely free of Skillshare premium so starting in the northern hemisphere where the nights are now long and dark and cold and northern light season is in full swing and as the sun sets, you'll see Jupiter and Saturn appearing in the southwestern skies. And the great rift section of the Milky Way heading into the west. And just above the great rift, we have the Cygnus region, which as the night goes on, comes down to the western horizon and eventually into the northwest. And if you haven't watched my recent video about Milky Way season and where to find different regions of the Milky Way at what time of year, you should go check it out. But you'll see Jupiter and Saturn are very close and I'll be talking more about the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn shortly. And if we look into the south, you'll notice Mars out pretty much all night, but setting in the early hours of the morning. And Mars dims significantly this month, so it goes from magnitude minus 1.1 to minus 0.3. And if we swing to the east, you'll notice the winter circle asterism of stars rising a lot earlier now. As you can see the winter circle, the winter hexagon, rising in the late evening. And then Sirius is up by about just before midnight. You have the full winter circle in the east southeast and it spends the rest of the night crossing into the southern skies and even down into the southwest and if you're up at 6 a.m. it's a good time to get a Milky Way arch panorama from south to north facing west you have the winter circle region on the left over to Cassiopeia and down to the Cygnus region but with the long dark nights and the winter circle region in the night sky it's a good time of year to pull out the star trackers as there are a lot of good beginner targets in this area of the night sky so there's of course Pleiades the open star cluster Hyades around Aldebaran a very popular target in the Orion Nebula also the Flame and Horsehead Nebula and if you have an astro modified camera there is a lot of good hydrogen alpha emissions as well so you have barnard's loop in the orion molecular cloud complex lambda orionis the rosette nebula 
higher in the sky. We have the Flaming Star Nebula, the really bright California Nebula as well. So there's just lots of good, good beginner targets in this region of the sky. And with the nights being so long and dark, it's nice to get the tracker out and collect some good data. And then as the night goes on, and we enter the pre-dawn hours, and you'll notice Venus rising into the southeast, into the morning twilight, just before the sun comes up. As for conjunctions this month, on the 12th in the morning skies, you'll find Venus and a crescent moon in the southeast. On the 16th and the 17th, the moon will be very close to Jupiter and Saturn, which are of course very close to each other right now. But it'll probably be easier to photograph them with the moon on the 17th, when the moon is at a bit of a higher elevation above the horizon. And then on the night of the 23rd, you'll find the moon next to Mars, starts off high in the south and heads down towards the western horizon. And then in the southern hemisphere, as the sun sets, you will see Jupiter and Saturn very close in the west-southwest, and I'll be talking more about the Great Conjunction shortly. You'll also notice Mars in the northwest, heading down into the west-northwest. And Mars fading significantly this month, so it starts the month at magnitude minus 1.1 and ends the month at minus 0.3. But if we swing around to the east, so as the sun sets, the Milky Way almost parallel to the horizon with what we call the Winter Circle in the Northern Hemisphere rising into the Northeast, but of course the Southern Hemisphere is now summer. So I don't know if you guys call it the Summer Circle, but I'm so used to it being the Winter Circle. And as you'll see, it's a good time for a Milky Way arch panorama. So as the Milky Way gets higher, arching over the eastern skies from south to north, the winter circle region to the left, Sirius almost at the apex of the arch, and then coming down to the Carina Nebula, the dark Colsac Nebula next to the Crux, and the large and small Magellanic clouds very high in the southern skies. And as I mentioned in the northern hemisphere section, there are a lot of good targets here for a star tracker. So we have Pleiades, the open star cluster, Hyades surrounding Aldebaran in Taurus, one of the most popular beginner targets, the Orion Nebula, the Flame and Horsehead Nebula, and then if you have a astro modified camera, there's a lot of good hydrogen alpha emission nebulae in this region of the night sky. So you have Barnard's Loop in the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex, Lambda Orionis, the Rosette Nebula, and a bit lower to the horizon, so not as good in the Southern Hemisphere, but you also have the bright California Nebula and the Flaming Star Nebula as well. And if you also swing into the Southeast and the Southern Circumpolar region of the night sky, Carina Nebula, still quite high in the sky. That's an amazing target for star trackers. The Dark Colsac Nebula and that region of the Milky Way just circling around the South Celestial Pole. And if you haven't watched my video about Milky Way season and where to find different regions of the Milky Way and at different times of year, you should go check it out. And then as the night goes on and we enter the pre-dawn hours, you'll see Venus rising into the east-southeast, shining very bright just before the sun comes up. As for conjunctions this month, on the 12th in the morning, you'll find Venus and a crescent moon in the eastern skies. On the 16th in the evening skies, you'll find the moon along with Jupiter and Saturn, which are very, very close. And then on the 23rd, the moon will be close to Mars in the northwest, dropping down to the western horizon. So as for the special events this month, let's talk about the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. It's a conjunction that happens every 20 years, but this year they'll be so close that they haven't been this close since 1623. So as the month goes on, Jupiter and Saturn will get closer and closer until on the 21st, which just so happens to be the December solstice, they will be 0.1 degrees apart. So to give you some context, 0.1 degrees is about a fifth of the size 
of the moon's diameter. In the northern hemisphere, you can see them briefly in the evening skies in the southwest. And in the southern hemisphere, you can see them briefly in the evening skies in the southwest west. This to scale image here created by Rice University using Stellarium shows how they will appear through a telescope on the 21st. So in a telescope, you'll be able to get both of them in the same field of view. And you should also be able to capture a few of the bright moons as well. You can begin shooting in twilight where you have a chance of capturing both the planets and the moons in a single exposure. But as it gets darker, you will have to take two separate exposures, one for the surface detail of the planet and then another longer exposure to pick up the moons. Now, I mentioned the last time they were this close was in 1623, which is just 13 years after Galileo invented the telescope. But during that conjunction, they were really close to the sun. So it's very likely that nobody saw the conjunction. The last time they were this close and readily visible was 800 years ago. So it's certainly an event not to be missed. Then on the 14th, we have a total solar eclipse where the moon passes in front of the sun and completely blocks the sun's light. But similar to last year's eclipse, totality can only be seen from parts of Chile and Argentina as most of the path of totality falls in the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. But if you are somewhere in the Pacific or Atlantic Oceans, or if you're in Southern America, or even in Antarctica, you will get at least a partial eclipse. But the path of totality runs through Chile and Argentina. And for those of you on that path, the event from partial eclipse to total eclipse to partial eclipse will last around three hours but totality only lasts between 2 minutes and 2 minutes and 10 seconds. So it's a very short eclipse. Now, this eclipse occurs when the sun and moon are very high above the horizon. So when the partial eclipse starts, they'll already be about 63 degrees above the horizon. And by the time it gets to totality, they'll be about 70 to 74 degrees above the horizon. So it's very high in the sky. So if you want to capture a foreground, you'll probably have to do a panorama or use a really wide lens. That is, of course, if you're going for a wide angle shot. For more detail about the eclipse and for the exact area you plan to be, I'll put a link in the video description down below. And also check out my vlog from last year's total solar eclipse. I may give you some tips about how to shoot a solar eclipse. And I'll also post a link to an article I wrote about all of the stuff I learned from photographing that eclipse. Now, we also have the Gemlin Meteor Shower to look forward to this month, which is observable from both the Southern and Northern Hemisphere, although the Northern Hemisphere does have a little bit of an advantage. The peak this year is set to fall between the 13th and the 14th, which just so happens to be new moon, so viewing conditions are perfect. And during the peak from a dark sky location, you can expect at least 50 meteors per hour, sometimes over 100 meteors per hour. But the shower is officially active from the 3rd, to the 16th. So you can expect high rates a few days before the peak as well, as well as a day or two after the peak. The radiant point is in the constellation Gemini, but remember you don't have to look in the direction of the radiant point as meteors will fall all over the sky. But as Gemini rises higher as the night goes on, activity tends to pick up after midnight and in the early hours of the morning. So if you're going out in the evening, try and wrap up warm so that you have the patience to wait it out until after midnight when activity tends to pick up a little bit. Gemini meteors tend to be bright, white, and very slow moving. And with the peak falling on new moon this year, it's set to be the best meteor shower of 2020. So plenty of amazing astronomical events to end the year. Do whatever you can to find clear, dark skies. And that's all I've got for you this month, guys. So onto the hashtag Wittens. If you're new here, every month I set a target subject for people to photograph. They upload their images to social media using the hashtag Wittens, and then I pick three of my favorites every month. In third place, you win a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins a What's in the Night Sky t-shirt. And first place wins a Photo View Photography Guidebook of their choice. This month's target was Orion, and there were so many amazing entries with all different focal lengths, and it was really difficult to pick. In third place was Shivam, with this image of the flame and horsehead nebula. There was something about the richness in the contrast, the velvet black sky, and just the luminosity of the hydrogen alpha of the horsehead nebula that just, I don't know, it just really, really beautiful image. And it, it just really stood out to me. So well done to Shivam. 
you win the Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. In second place was Constantine with this wide angle view of a snowy walk and coming face to face with Orion. And I just love that Orion is in the upright position and it's just really coming one to one and meeting Orion, the big hunter. And of course this winter scene with the warm light, something about it just makes me want to be there and experiencing that winter scene and the winter sky and the, the hydrogen alpha of Barnard's loop is looking amazing. The bright stars are popping and it's just a really nice processed image. So well done to Constantine, you win yourself a Witten's t-shirt. And in first place was this image by Stephen of the Flame and Horsehead Nebula as well as the Orion Nebula. And just amazing detail in the dark dust clouds in that area as well. And it's just nice and sharp and full of detail. And he's also captured Comet C2020 M3 Atlas as well, which was passing through Orion during November. So well done to Stephen, you in a photo view photography guidebook of your choosing. Now this month, I mentioned last month, we're gonna go for the winter circle as it's dominating the skies now. So everybody has a chance. It's quite a big area of the night sky. It's very difficult to squeeze into a single exposure. So you may have to try a panorama with a wide angle lens to try and squeeze it all in. But I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys capture. So if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies. Thank <laughs> you.